Hi, everybody. Excellent. You have a tentative verbal agreement with your landlord about buying the house. Now it's time to turn that verbal understanding into a written offer and hopefully turn that written offer into a signed contract. This is kind of like how deals are done in commercial real estate when people are buying office buildings or large apartment complexes or warehouses. The buyer and seller come to a tentative agreement over the big issues in a term sheet or a letter of intent. Then they hand the preliminary agreement over to an attorney who drafts up a full written offer. The full written offer includes the agreed upon issues, but it also includes all the zillion other smaller issues that still need to be worked out as well. The buyer and seller go back and forth with a written offer and counter offers until they come to an agreement on all the details in the contract, or they realize they can't come to an agreement and they abandon negotiations. The stage you're in now is equivalent to the term sheet or letter of intent stage in a commercial real estate sale. You've come to an tentative agreement on some big issues, or at least you're getting close to coming to an agreement, but you still need to work out a lot of smaller issues. So you send your real estate agent or attorney a list of all the items that you and your landlord have more or less agreed on. The list might include the sales price, how much money, if any, the seller will contribute toward paying your closing costs. These are the seller credits. What personal property is included in the sale? For example, the refrigerator, washer and dryer, furniture, etc. Whether the contract will have a buyer inspection contingency clause in it, definitely should. The closing date. Whether the seller will buy a home warranty for you, hopefully they will. And how to handle your current rental deposits. Then, based on that list, you ask your agent or attorney to draft up a full written offer. You don't have to have everything figured out, but it would be great if you already agreed on some of the most important stuff, like the price and whether the seller will contribute 3% or whatever percent toward your closing costs. Your real estate attorney will bring up a lot of issues you hadn't even thought about that will need to be addressed in the full written offer. Your agent or attorney will draft a written offer for you you should carefully review it, discuss it with your agent or attorney until you feel confident that you understand it. After you sign it and it's sent to the seller, it becomes a binding offer. From now on, all the negotiations are in writing. They're not verbal anymore. Nothing in the verbal discussions was likely binding. It was just talk. This written offer, however, signed by you is binding if your landlord accepts it and signs it. Now the ball is in your landlord's court once they receive your offer. If your landlord agrees to the offer and signs it as is, the offer becomes a binding contract between you and your landlord. Your landlord will likely want to make changes to your offer. That's super common. Typically changes to your offer are proposed using counter offers. A counter offer basically says, Hey, we agree to everything in your written offer, except these items below, which I propose to change. In a normal sale, the counter offers typically revolve around changing the sale price. If you've already tentatively agreed on the price, perhaps you use an appraisal to set the price, then there would be fewer counter offers. If you don't agree to all the changes they proposed in their counter offer number one, then you can make your own counter offer number two, propose <laughs> changes to their counter offer number one, and so on. Hopefully, you're narrowing down the points of disagreement with your each counter offer until agreement is reached. Sometimes it becomes apparent an agreement can't be reached and you just give up on buying the place. But if you get to the point that you're doing counter offers, the odds are pretty good that you'll eventually be able to reach an agreement. The original signed offer together with all the signed counter offers become the binding contract. After you have a signed contract, you or your agent will take the signed contract and your earnest money deposit check to the closing agent or perhaps you wire the earnest money deposit into an escrow account. Congratulations, you are now under contract or pending or in escrow. <laughs> it's called different things in different parts of the country, but it's all good, very, very good. In the next video, we'll talk about a super important money issue we mentioned earlier, seller credits.